Our neighborhood feels a lot less safe now than it did three years ago. You know what I mean? Than it did pre-pandemic. What do you mean? And I wonder if a lot of people are experiencing this or we just want random city where crime is starting to really invade the area. Because we had this email from the park a couple months ago. It says, Hope All Is Well has been brought to our attention that there have been car and bike thefts over the last couple of weeks in our community. So that's here in the trailer park. We would like to advise you all to please make sure your vehicles are locked and stored in a safe place. We'll be forced to look at our cameras and provide evidence to the cops to take care of this. And we've never gotten an email like this from the park no, before. No, no. For the three years that we've been here, a little over three years now, there have not been any car thefts, bike thefts, or that anything like of. that that was yeah. brought to our attention. Yeah, the park's never sent out an email. Like, it wasn't that serious. Right. And they said thefts with an S, so that makes me think it's happened a lot. Well, like, there, enough. There's no S, but it kind of reads like there should be. That car there have been bike. car and bike theft yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. But that's either way, that's multiple items at least. But it sounds right. like multiple cars. Right. And it makes me wonder if that is like motorcycles or like bikes. Like, you know bicycles. what I mean? Bicycles. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way they worded it, it sounds really serious. Yeah. We just, this place used to be so safe. At least it felt like it. It did yeah. feel safe. We've never had an Amazon package stolen or anything like that. The only thing that has made us feel unsafe here is the dog attacks. Yeah. And we've been attacked by dogs several times. Yeah. But we haven't had any, like, people. Neighbor were, issues like yeah. that. Yeah, no. Now, we've seen people, like, passed out in the streets, in the trailer park streets and stuff like that. It looks like they might yeah. be strung out. So things like that, you could say, oh, well, they may burglarize a place and they're yeah. running low and they need a fix. I don't know because it hasn't been happening. Right. And that's also usually more like the typical Florida druggy passed out in the corner person, not like an active, like, violent type criminal trying yeah, to steal nowhere stuff. nowhere else we've lived in Florida, we have people passed that's out in the true. streets. So I don't yeah. know if it's a Florida thing, but it's definitely a this area thing. Yeah. But I guess that would be the first sign that an area might be going down. But I'm just saying, we felt safe here. We felt safe outside the trailer park. Yeah. Now, just more and more, we're noticing um, people who look like they may be down on their luck, something like that. Maybe the pandemic really affected a bunch of people. Yeah. But now it's starting to be like, I really wouldn't want you and Jack out by yourself. Right. I don't want to go out with but him before, by myself. It, it, yeah. You literally don't want to go anywhere without me. Yeah. But before it was pretty safe. Yeah. So I'm like, are we in the middle of some kind of seismic shift to where good neighborhoods are becoming bad? Maybe, I don't know. Does that mean the bad neighborhoods become good? Like, how does that work? Oh, that would be kind of cool, actually. Wait, you know that's I mean? never going to happen, though. Because, like, Detroit used to be a popping city. Yeah. One of the biggest cities in the U.S. Yeah. You know, it, it was full of people. And now it's not a place where many people want to live. The real estate values are super low. Right. You buy a house in Detroit, $40,000. Right. You know, here it might cost 500000 Could you ever see that becoming a popping area again, though? I couldn't really. Well, I couldn't see it, but that doesn't mean it couldn't happen. I mean, true. You never know. But yeah, I can't see it personally. But right. I'm saying, is this area, could this become a Detroit? Right. Clear water, Florida. Can you imagine? Is that what we're in the middle of? That's why I'm curious. Have yeah. other people seen something similar in their neighborhoods? We've seen a ton of posts. We got that email from the park talking yeah. about car thefts and bike thefts. Also, Lex spends a lot of time on Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a local social media app. But mm -hmm. You put in your zip code and you can only see people posting in a certain region. Yeah. So you get to see what's going on in your surrounding area. And you've sent me so many posts. Here's one of them. Yeah. And this I'm is just from a couple posts. days ago. Thank you, Clearwater Police Department, for the effort put in to catch a person that burglarized my home. Just waiting on the DNA results to press charges. We weren't seeing stuff like this on next door no. a few years back. No. It was mainly lost dog posts. Yeah. Stuff yeah. about handymen, good ones, bad ones, things yeah. like that. It's like local community stuff. Yeah. We used to look up the crime maps because it's like when you're not familiar with an area, you want to get to know it, you know. And they park on the grass in Florida. So it's like you just <laughs> never really know when you're in a hood or not because the culture is different. But we never used to see stuff like this. Yeah. But now even just out and about the feeling when you look the around, feel, yeah. you feel less safe. Yeah. Even today, we went to Starbucks. Yeah. And somebody looked like they were down there. Look, came and approached the truck. Yeah, all the way up to his driver's side door. And you had gotten out and walked around to my door. I sit in the back with Jack. And so the guy probably thought you walked away. And then I feel like he looked through the window and he might have seen that you were still there. And he was like, what did he yeah, say? He He's saw like, me and he goes, oh, oh, do you work here? Yeah. I'm like, no. He's like, oh, I thought you were somebody else. And he started mumbling like, and he walked off. Is that really what he was thinking? Or is he just like right. coming up with some kind of like, oh, you caught me? Right. But I don't know, stuff like that happens all the time now. And here's another post from Nextdoor. 
I have a question that I'm trying to be sensitive in asking. I see a lot of individuals that appear to be down on their luck that walk up and down the street during the day. Today, I saw two individuals openly shooting up H on the corner of, you know, he names the two streets. This is all within our zip code, yes. by the way. Like by next door is like two square store. miles or something like that. Is there a clinic or shelter that people vacate during the day in the area that causes a lot of this type of activity along main roads? Dang. Now, I haven't seen that personally. Yeah. But I've seen people who, like, I a wouldn't be surprised posts. if they did that. Yeah. It's weird, though, that they said, is there a shelter that's vacating during the day? Because it's almost like, where do these people come from? But I feel like that's the same question we're asking. Right. Like, where it seems like this huge population of increasing sort of, I don't know, vagrants. I don't know if you're you're supposed to say unhoused people modern day or something. I don't know. But it could be the cost of living going up, kind of pushing people into different areas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because St. Pete is, like, ridiculous. Yeah, St. Petersburg is a city maybe, like, 15 minutes south of yeah. us. Yeah. And the home prices are insane there. I mean, they've yeah. gone up a lot here, but down there, it's, it's down just Down there. It's, like, 3-2 Blockhouse 750, something yeah. like that. But when we first moved here, people were t we were asking, like, how are the areas? What's a good place to live? And they named, like, St. Pete. That there's, like, three main roads down there. They're like, you go south of that, um, be careful. Mm -hmm. And what if prices are going up so much down there that they're getting it's pushed pushing. out That's what a I dangerous think. neighborhood to up yeah. here? That's what I think. I think people are getting, like, pushed out of the denser areas where they're living. So that means St. Pete's going to become mostly Nicer. good? Like, there's in really theory. nice areas of St. Pete, but there's also areas you would not want to go at no. night. No, right. I'm like, there's, like, we went to, like, a trailer park one time that was, like, barbed wire around it in St. Pete. And, like, you could hear the music. It was like, doom, 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 doom. Like, you know, it was, like, very ghetto. And uh, I feel like, no, that's never going to be nice. There's never going to be a place that people are like, you know what? I pay $3,000 a month to live here. Uh, if prices go up enough. But those trailers are also tiny. They were really small. Yeah, they somebody would probably buy it out and make a big development and, or yeah, something, build just apartments. Develop. So maybe then, if you like take all the housing out and you like build something new, maybe. But that's still gonna take ten years. So where does everyone go in the meantime? Yeah, over time, I don't know. But then also like, so I've noticed like when we used to live in L.A. and in Florida, like both coasts, like wherever it's hot, people seem to flock to because it's easier, I guess, to live, you know, through the seasons or whatever. But it's like. I just don't know if it's like a, a true increase like in this area or if it's like a just kind of a if fluke. it's just getting shifted around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's another post from next door. This was about a week ago. It says two, possibly three vehicles stolen in this estate. I don't want to say the name of the estate. Last night, all unlocked, two Ford F-150s, and I'm not sure what the other one was. The same people who stole these attempted to steal my wife's car and truck. Got it all on video. Two of the vehicles were recovered almost immediately. Law enforcement chased them into the mobile home park on the east side of the street. Make it a point to check that your vehicles are locked before going to bed. So they're not professionals. Yeah. Because they got caught immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that means there's more entry level thieves? You think they're not professional? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because I, things are so expensive, you know, that, I mean, if people can't put pennies together to buy things and crime is going to increase. Like that seems like a natural sort of consequence of things being too expensive. Yeah. It feels like all post pandemic stuff like that before the pandemic and after or during to after. Yeah. It feels like two different time periods. Like there was it a really major does. shift. It really and does. Not just in prices, like the feel. Yeah. It really does. Like when you think about it though, before the pandemic, we used to have like our little two ninety nine fish sandwiches we used to go get. And it's like, if you think about that being a staple for someone and then now everything's $15, you know, every meal pretty much can't really get cheap food anymore. Then that same person now has to go steal some cars or whatever they're doing. We don't have to. Yeah. But they think they do because they feel like, you know, they feel like eh, my bus job isn't going to, my bus boy job isn't going to pay for this. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could interview a car thief. Do you really? Yeah, to see how they think. Because do they really think, like, oh, I have to do this to provide? Or are they like, oh, well, this is easier than, you know, building skills and working yeah, my true. way up? Like, is it more of like a, they feel like it's a choice or they feel like it's a pressure? Like Right. Like, modern day with the internet, you're exposed to so much information. I find it hard to believe they think this is the only way I could put food on the table. Right? But they might be like, uh. Oh, I don't want to go work for it. Right, but then that's I'm too like, much work. I'm like, in the same respect, there's so many cameras everywhere that I find it hard to believe that you think you won't get caught doing something like stealing. I someone's. think they think that I see these uh, robbery gas station robbery videos all the time. Sometimes people are not even wearing masks. 
Right. And you know gas stations have cameras. That ain't nothing new. It's weird, though, because it's like you you think it go hand in hand. Like, obviously, there's more risk of getting caught. And like, is it worth it? But then, like, also, you don't have to, you know, it's not that consequential in a lot of places to steal less than $1,000. Yeah, but we're talking cars. Yeah, but what if it's Grand Theft Auto? Breaking entering into houses. Yeah, that's that's intense. These come with consequences. That's intense. Especially in a state like Florida, like you would think people would have a fear of like, what if they, you know, they pack in and I go in there and. But you're talking about rational people. I think a lot of the people who do this kind of activities are not the most rationally minded people. Do you think it's a high for them? Like, do you think they're getting off ooh. on it? Like they're excited, like, ooh, adrenaline. Like they're kind of addicted to the quick yeah. money, adrenaline rush. Oh, I might yeah. die. Yeah. Or do you think it's more like they're literally trying to survive? Ah, uh, it would be hard to say. That's why I would love to interview somebody who does this kind of stuff. But yeah. then, like airing them out online, like, it's not going to happen. I would love to <laughs> do it. Let me that? dream, okay? But if I anyone would like to volunteer, because like we're on the outside trying to think from their perspective. Yeah, I find that incredibly difficult. It is, and I guess each thief would be different. One might be like, "Man, I got to do this with food on the table." Maybe they're just not aware of other mm-hmm. ways. And another one might be like, "Oh, I want a, a Gucci watch." Yeah, or something like that. I want a Rolex. Yeah, so I'm going to steal cars. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I find it to be incredibly hard to try to think about if, like, when we're going to move, where we're going to go. Exactly. And, like, how we're going to avoid these things. Like, with the good neighborhoods and bad neighborhoods shifting, how do we, you know, find a place to live? Right. Like, how do you since know? we live here, we can kind of see the pattern. It's like, oh, we're going to have to move at least 15, 20, 30 minutes out from where yeah. we are. Yeah. Because we see this area is going downhill. Right. If we bought a house in this area and they're charging outrageous prices, prices have doubled. You know, if we bought a house here, it might be less uh, less valuable in 10 years than it is now because of the way we see the neighborhoods are changing. Right. But it's like other areas, it might look good during the day and we go see it. We want to buy a house. We don't really know these areas we that well. We don't. Are we going to buy a house in a place that the house is less valuable in 10 years? That would suck. That would suck, yeah. And then also it's like the whole reason would be we. I want to be able to go on a walk with Jack without you. Like... <laughs> Something simple like that that we don't do here, and then we get there and we can't do it because that's just the state of what the state of everywhere that's relatively affordable modern day. Like, right. do you have to go to like these gated communities that are insanely that expensive? we could not afford? Like, there's yeah. neighborhoods that you know are gonna be good. You know, like we have a Bel Air down here. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, really nice also means really expensive. We're talking million dollar homes, right? And that's not in question for us, right? right. We're not gonna be able to get a million Super dollar super high barrier to entry. And then but, even if that neighborhood stays good at the Bel Air, they're not going to let that go to crap. What if the hood kind of moves next to Bel Air? Like Beverly Hills. Yeah, like Beverly. Yeah, you yeah. saw burglaries in Beverly Hills and things. Yeah. What if that happens? Yeah. We even were in Beverly Hills at one time. Do you remember? And there was like, I thought it was the most artistic moment. There was a Lamborghini parked on the street. And then there was like a homeless person sleeping in the ditch between the car and the sidewalk. Yeah, like, when we went to the mall. Right under the Lamborghini. In Beverly Hills. And, you know, you're talking Rodeo Drive. You're talking all these fancy stores like that I wouldn't even feel comfortable entering because they're going to look at me like you're not going to buy anything. <laughs> you know? And then there's this homeless person sleeping in the shadow of the vehicle. Should have taken a picture. Right. But then I've that could be, like, intrusive. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then also, if you're homeless and you're sleeping under a Lamborghini shadow, you're not trying to be, like, in private. Yeah. You're just in the middle of the sidewalk. Yeah. It reminds me of, like, you know, when you go overseas and there's those, like, gypsy people that are in the middle of the sidewalk like this. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's like they're clearly not trying to, like, have a private moment. Right. So You go behind a building, something like that. Yeah. Or a bush or something. I don't know. I feel torn with this sort of modern day crisis we're going through of, like, unhoused people. And because it's, like, on the one hand, especially in Florida, a lot of people are hooked on drugs or they have been hooked on drugs. And they are in that cycle where if you help them, they're going to go get another hit and they're going to binge. And I help them, you like donate some money, donate money, you know, or like give them a place to stay for a month or things like that. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem to ever like solve the problem because they're addicted and like addicts end up back addicted, you know. But it's like that's Florida. That's a lot of the unhoused people in Florida historically have been like that. But now it's like, well, if people can't afford apartments, things like that, do they count as you know what I mean? It's like two different kinds of situations we're dealing with. Right. But I'm not even just talking about that. The car thefts and stuff. These people are not unhoused. Where are they living, though? If they're getting pushed out from like where they're living because they can't afford it. 
Where are they moving to? I don't know. They may be living with a bunch of family. Who knows? But these people, they're not looking down on their luck. Dang. Like the pictures on the uh, security cameras of the car thefts? They look regular. Yeah. Mm. I don't think it's the unhoused people that are doing the grand theft autos. Yeah. Dude, oh, man. Man, I don't know. It's kind of scary. And then I feel like there's there's like modern day a few different camps as far as how you should look at people doing these things. You know, should you look at them sympathetically? Should you look at them like they're going to like steal my stuff and hurt my family? I mean, why can't you do both? Can you? Yeah. I mean, you can have sympathy for their situation. I mean, who knows what it is, but it's not desirable. But you can also be ready to protect your family. Yeah. Like sympathy doesn't mean you're going to bend over backwards for somebody and pull your pants down. Uh, it just means you can feel bad for their situation. But you yeah. got to do what you got to do to protect your family. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. I don't know. It's just like a it's a weird kind of thing I've never had to face in my life. You know, like I've never had to really feel close to close to crime, close to like crime knocking at my door, affecting me. You know, you like you read all these stats and you hear all these things or you've known someone that grew up in the hood and stuff. But it's like I've never actually had to think our child is here and he could very well be seeing some things happen. Right. Yeah, in front how of does it feel as a woman, as a mom, when you see these kinds of things? Like you have someone approaching our truck today. You get these emails with the thefts and all the things we've seen of people's like, oh, my goodness. You know, honestly, I have much less sympathy than I ever have. Really? Yeah. Like as far as like people doing things like I can understand probably as a mom, if your kid ends up in jail, you're going to love him no matter what. Like, you know how they say your mom's going to be there for you regardless. Right. Like I, I saw a post on Instagram today and the girl was like, free my son. You know what I mean? I could see that. But like. I have no sympathy for like other people's kids who are like potentially going to threaten my potentially child. Potentially harming your kids. Yeah, like it's weird because I always have had this sort of sort of sympathy for these situations, but when when it comes to your innocent child in the crossroads of this chaos, I have no sympathy. Like I'm like lock the doors, you know what I mean? Like let that man sit out there. Like I don't want any parts of this. I don't want him even coming close and breathing my baby's air. You know, yeah, that's interesting. I still is have that sympathy. bad? I feel like that could be well, harsh. Maybe we define sympathy differently. Like I still have sympathy. I have but compassion. I'm more than willing to protect my family any day of the week. Okay. Yeah. I won't let sympathy get in the way of logical behaviors. It's logical right? to protect your family when they're in danger, and there's no emotions or feelings that are going to get in the way of that. Right. But I still feel bad for people who are down on their luck. Yeah, like I don't wish that for them, and I don't like you know I'm not laughing at them or you know what I mean. It's like I definitely would want to help them but also i feel a lot more cautious about handing cash and exchanging hand germs and things like that so you basically you've gotten kind of hyper protective yes for sure that mama bear energy for sure like even like when people you know how it is when people try to like come up to jack and it's amazing the strangers that will walk walk up and just touch him just touch him like they just want to rub him like he's a little buddha or something <laughs> you know i don't think you rub buddhas do you well like you know the little statue buddhas and people rub them for good luck oh okay yeah like the little golden things whatever. learn something new every day but yeah they like rub they come up and like rub his arm and stuff and i'm like first of all leprosy is popping off in southeastern florida it's an endemic right or endemic whatever that thing is right now it's like there's so many things that i never have thought about with my personal health and safety that now with the kid i'm just like uh you know, I want my doors locked. I don't even want to get outside. I'll turn around. won't even go to this restaurant or whatever. Whatever I'm doing, change of plans when I see this, you know? And this is see, Like the guy sitting there walking up. to Like he was sitting there before he walks up to the car to check your door, whatever he was doing. But it's like when I saw him, I was instantly like, eh, don't want to go anymore. Don't want to go to Starbucks anymore. Never mind. Yeah, you pointed it out when we pulled up. You know? See, you have pretty good awareness these days. Yeah, it's like post-pandemic awareness you know <laughs> and then also i feel kind of bad because now people are very i feel like we're all very conscious when people cough in the store you know stuff like that you, when you hear them down the street even walking on the sidewalk behind you whatever and they're uh -huh, uh -huh, it's like you notice that and i never used to notice yeah, that. life is just so different now yeah. it's, it's two different eras i feel like the pandemic's gonna be like a a new chapter in it, history, yeah. if not yeah. a new book, a new volume, like after yeah. the pandemic. I feel like everyone's very cautious, you know, like just a lot more cautious than before. And then like even we went to the pediatrician and everyone was wearing face masks and we were like, 
are people sick? And it's like, first of all, it's a, it's a doctor. So probably like there's probably going to be at least one sick kid coming today. And secondly, that could have been totally normal before the pandemic. But now we're like, why is everyone wearing face masks? Right. Is this a dangerous place to be like, you know, in close space? But it's it's weird. It's like, oh, my gosh, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm kind of freaked out. About modern day to like just having a kid in this post pandemic world where crime is uncertain things are shifting around like obviously real estate prices are insane interest you know? rates interest it's like for the cost of everything they must be the powers that be must be like planning something or like trying to like push us into a corner of some sort well some people believe that, that there's some major plan and they're trying to make it so we own nothing eat bugs Whatever. Oh, yeah, the hell. You know, that, that may be the case, yeah. but I see All the steps currency. they're taking, and I get it at this point. You got inflation, you got to tackle inflation, you got to raise interest rates. But it's like we got inflation from their knee jerk overreaction to the pandemic. So it's like they really caused all the damage, and now they're doing the solution to the damage, which is making it hard, hard to get a house, hard to uh, borrow yeah. money. It's making everything harder, harder to exist. Hard. What? what? What were you going to say? No, I'm saying they Harder caused the problem. And now they're also doing the solution, which yeah. is not a fun solution to endure. How does it feel as a man in the modern world? How does it feel to like have a young family with just all that at play? I mean, honestly, I don't feel too bad about it. I feel chill. Oh. I feel like I feel like I could protect us if need be. I mean, if someone has a drop on you, then I mean, it's not much you could do about that. But if need be, I feel like I can protect us. And I feel, I'm glad we're in the trailer park right now because it's relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, our lot rent has gone up four or five times. It's still t less than half the price of a house note. Yeah. You know what I mean? Less than half. So I feel like we're in a decent position to weather the storm, you know, the pending recession or whatever's going to happen. We don't know. Yeah. I feel like we're in a decent position. This trailer park is relatively safe, or at least it, it has been for the last several years. So I feel like we kind of have, like, a little trailer a little park bubble. fortress. Yeah. It kind of feels like a gated community here just because it's <laughs> off the beaten path. That's no kind of wild. driving though. through here yeah. on their everyday commute to work. So if you have criminals driving through neighborhoods on their commute to work, they might be scoping. Oh, wait, they probably don't work. But on their, you know, they're going to McDonald's or wherever they're going, Walmart. They might yeah. be scoping out places, but they're not scoping here out because this is not on the route. Yeah. So I like that we're kind of tucked off a little bit. Yeah. I feel like we're in a decent position to weather whatever's going to happen. Now, yeah. it may take a while to get a house, but as long as we're patient and not rushing, yeah. I like the position we're in. And now, also, like, what, what if we had a house note right now, we had really high be expenses. Stressful it would be harder to weather a storm because we don't know how bad things are going to get, how long our interest rate's going to be up. We don't know. How bad is inflation yeah. going to get? Right. Will there be a depression again? Like, yeah, we have no it seems impossible, but also it's been, you know, a century. Like, I feel like there are cycles to things. Who knows? Who knows? That's actually terrifying to think about. But they say now we're dealing with, you know, like, I mean, I was just reading an article on this, so it's like, kind of relevant but they say now we're dealing with a lot of things that we thought we had moved past like polios back in the u.s and stuff like that you know and so it's just like man are we really is it headed for that level of negativity we don't know but i feel like as a man with a brand new family in society i'm not in a bad position yeah and it was by dumb luck that we landed in the trailer park like yeah. it wasn't pleasant the dumbest we didn't luck. want to be here but then after <laughs> right. the pandemic kicked off we were glad to be here because it was yeah. so cheap if we were in a house we may have been getting foreclosed on because we were so broke in 2020 yeah. it wasn't even funny yeah so it's like i kind of like the position i feel like now is the position to be cautious to wait and save money yeah yeah see as so that's what we're doing we're kind of waiting waiting to see what happens with the market trying to save aggressively save as much money as we can so we yeah. can get that house eventually yeah I feel like it's not the time to be irrational and run around making huge decisions. Life-altering decisions. I feel yeah. like now's the time for patience and prudence. If you are a reasonable, rational, and fair-minded person, you're exactly the kind of person we would love to connect with. We just recently launched our Locals community. So if you head on over to bradandlex.locals.com, that's brad, A-N-D, lex.locals.com, uh, we would love to have you in our community.